Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Al-awwal al-lazhi laysa qablahu shay Wal-akhir al-lazhi laysa ba'dahu shay Wal-zahir al-lazhi laysa fawqahu shay Wal-batin al-lazhi laysa dunahu shay Ala al-arsh istawa Lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard Wa ma baynahuma Wa ma tahta al-thara Ya'lamu ma fi anfusina Wa la na'lamu ma fi nafsi وهو علام الغيوب هو أعلم بكم إذ أنشأكم من الأرض وإذ أنتم جنة في بطول أمهاتكم فلا تزكوا أنفسكم هو أعلم بمن اتقى ألا يعلم من خلق وهو لطيف الخبير وعنده مفاتح الغيب لا يعلمها إلا هو ويعلم ما في البر والبحر وما تسقط من ورقة إلا يعلمها ولا حبة في ظلمات الأرض ولا رطب ولا يابس إلا في كتاب مبين وأصلي وأسلم وأبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجي وأحبابي ومن احتدى بهديه واتبع سنته إلى يوم الدين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين فنعم المولى ونعم النصير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أرسله رحمة للعالمين فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجزاه الله عنا وعن أمته خير ما جاز نبيا عن أمته ثم أما بعد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the other and final episode of this series الحلال والحرام The lawful and the unlawful Today إن شاء الله we will be looking at another principle on this huge topic of al-halal wal-haram. The lawful and the prohibited. Al-haram, haramun ala al-jameer. When something is made haram by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, its prohibition is for everyone. It does not distinguish between the rich and the poor. It does not distinguish between the aristocrat and the beggar. Al-haram, haramun ala al-jami'i. The haram is prohibited for everyone alike. It does not differentiate between any social status that people may have, but it gives everyone an equal opportunity in terms of fairness, in terms of justice, in terms of implementation of the sharia. The law is the same for all, irrespective of the origin. For the Arab and the non-Arab, it's the same. For the black and the white, it's the same. Black lives matter, and it's equality for everyone. For the aristocrat and the beggar, for the rich and the poor, the privileged and the underprivileged, the fortunate and the less fortunate. Even in difference of race and status of religion, Equality is for everyone. Not because you have a link or connection with someone is going to save you and meaning that you are above the law. The Prophet ﷺ says, By Allah, if Fatima, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the daughter of Muhammad وسلم, were to steal, I would have her hand cut off. Meaning the application of the law. Meaning the application of the sharia. Meaning what is haram for anybody in the Ummah is also haram for her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cited a wonderful ayah or ayat in the Quran, a wonderful incident in the days of the Prophet wasallam. in the case of a theft of an armor. There were two suspects. One was a nominal Muslim and the other was a Jew. Those who were Muslims were very sympathetic towards the nominal Muslim. 
And they sort of persuaded the Prophet وسلم, that the Muslim was innocent and the Jew was guilty of the theft. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his hikmah and mercy, he exposed a conspiracy that was coin against the Jew and exonerated the Jew from all blame and fault. Can you imagine that the Quran has been revealed to protect a Jew? Revelation exposing conspiracy and established justice for the Jew. Revelation came to exonerate the Jew, to save him from the blame that he was put into, the blame that was placed upon him. The fault that was upon him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. The ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about is, is in surah number four, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that indeed we have revealed to you the book with a purpose, the truth. So that you may judge, you may make judgment between or amongst mankind with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown you. Meaning you need to explain to them the sharia and judge according to the sharia and to make judgment with fairness and justice and do not be an advocate for the deceitful that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiven and merciful and do not argue on behalf of those who deceive themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who are habitually sinful and deceiving people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he needs to use the sharia to judge amongst people, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, whether they are from the Ahlul Kitab, whether they are Jews or Christians, or whether they are even polytheists. And do not be an advocate that who could become very de deceitful and deceptive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how he, how he should execute his judgment and the things that he should consider. That they conceal their evil intentions and deeds from the people, but they cannot conceal it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the stuff that was stolen in the armor, one of them actually took the stuff and put it in possession of the Jewish person thinking that people would say that when, they, when it's found with him, that he is the culprit and he is the guilty one. Well then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed these ayat in the Quran, is actually exposing the guilty ones, and he has exonerated the Jewish person. He has exonerated the Jew. He has saved the Jew from all the torment that was about to fall upon him. يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ that they, during the night, they were actually scheming up all these things against this person. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encompassing with whatever they do. And this is beautiful in the Quran, that indeed here you are, those who argue on their behalf in this world, but who will argue for them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Who would argue with Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Who would argue with Allah for them on the day of resurrection? Or who will then be their representative? It's a wonderful ayah in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about justice 
and justice for one and all, and justice for the black and the white, and justice for the Arab and non-Arab, and justice for the poor and the rich, and justice for the fortunate and the less fortunate, and justice for the aristocrat, and even to the beggar. Justice for all. Unlike there is a verse in the Bible, when we talk about interest, and we talk about the riba, and we talk about usury, it states very clearly in the Bible, in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 19 and 20, that do not charge a fellow Israelite interest, whether on money or food, or anything else that may earn interest, or you may charge a foreigner interest. Not allowed to charge your brother that believes or shares the same belief with you, but you're allowed to charge interest on any foreigner, but not a fellow Israelite so that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you put on your hand in the land you're entering to possess. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us differently that whether a person is a Jew or a Christian or a Muslim or a non-Muslim or a polytheist or an atheist, that is justice for all, equality for all. Whatever is haram for one is haram for all. Whatever is good for one is good for all. Whatever is good for Muslims is also good for non-Muslims. And that's the way we look at it from a Sharia perspective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that even from the Ahlul Kitab, you will have people who are extremely good, that you can trust them with anything. From among the people of the scripture, is he whom, if you entrust him with a great amount of money, a great amount of money, meaning, if you give him a qintar, a huge treasure, then he is likely to return it to you. But you also have from among them that if you give them a dinar, then you will have to be on them again and again, constantly standing over them, demanding it. So in every nation, in every religion, in every race, you would find that you have some sort of inconsistency. You'll have some people who are good and some people that are bad, and some people that do not like us and some people that we don't like. And we have to get rid of that animosity and hatred within our heart. That's important for us to do as Muslims because you need to think that we are all part of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next principle I want us to look at today is which means necessities dictate exceptions or necessity dictates exceptions. That necessities dictate exception. Meaning that when you are in a very tight situation and you ask yourself, is there a way out of all of this? So why is it the situation is so tight, so difficult, it's testing, and we have no way out of it? You see, although Islam blocks the avenues to haram, it is not oblivious of the weaknesses of human beings and the exigencies of life. Meaning that Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa talks about everything that is haram, whatever leads to haram, remember this principle we did before, that what haram, whatever leads to haram is also haram. Islam blocks all of these avenues to haram, but still it is not oblivious, it's not forgetful of the weaknesses of human beings and the exigencies of life, meaning the urgency or urgent situation that you may have in life. Provision is made in dire circumstances and permits Muslims on the compulsion because of necessity to eat the prohibited things, just to remove that need of necessity, just enough to remove the necessity. On this basis, scholars say necessity removes Restriction, and that's what we talk about here. At-tarurat to be al-mahdurat. Necessities dictate exceptions. Why necessity? Because of the reasons that I have just explained. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, when we talk about necessity, at-taruratu taqdiru bi qabliha that necessity must only be answered proportionally. So when we are in such a situation, a very difficult situation, there is nothing else to eat except that it is haram, then it's permissible, but only permissible for a period of time. It's short-lived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
ولحم الخنزير وما أهل به لغير الله فمن اضطر غير باب ولا عاد فلا إثم عليه إن الله غفور رحيم It's amazing ayah in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He has only forbidden to you dead animals إنما حرم عليكم الميتة والدم ولحم الخنزير وما أهل به لغير الله prohibited to you are dead animals, blood, the flesh of swine, and that which has been dedicated to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَمَدِ الثُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاقٍ So whosoever is forced, فَمَدِ الثُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاقٍ Someone is being forced now, not by desire, غَيْرَ بَاقٍ وَلَا عَادٍ It is not his desire, he doesn't desire to have it. He doesn't want it. There is not a craving for it. Neither he has the intention to transgress the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no sin upon him. Meaning that in that situation, in that tight situation, in that stressful situation, he is allowed to eat. So he can eat. He can eat the meat of pig. He can eat anything that someone pronounce the name other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or even that of the dead. If that's just to help them survive, then at that stage it's permissible. فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ There is no sin upon him. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiven and he is merciful. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants ease for us. يُرِيرَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to lighten for you your difficulties. And indeed, man was created weak. Those are two very important principles in understanding Sharia. The last one I want to deal with is what is called ittiqahu shubuhat, meaning to avoid doubtful matters. Ittiqahu shubuhat khashiyatan al waqu'u fil haram for fear of falling into what is haram. Similar to block, blocking all avenues that lead to haram, mainly because of confu confusion and doubtful texts, then we don't know how to apply the laws. So we are in a state of doubt. The doubts arise because we are not sure of the text. We are not sure of the, the authenticity of the text. We are not sure of the evidence. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained in detail to you what he has forgiven or what he has uh, made uh, prohibited to all of us. So it's important for us to understand that. It's important for us to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the haram very clear. But the shubuhat, ittiqahu shubuhat, to stay away from the things that are doubtful, there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that talks about that the halal is clear and the haram is clear. In al halal bayin. In al halal bayin. Wal haram bayin. Wa baynahuma mushtabihad. And between the haram and the halal, there are doubtful issues, there are doubtful matters. La ya'alamu unna kathirun min al nas. But most people do not know them. They do not know whether they are halal or haram. So one who avoids them, in order to safeguard his religion and his honor, that person is safe. While if someone engages in a part of them, he may be doing something that is haram. And he didn't realize that what he's doing is haram. Like the one who grazes his animals near the hima. And the hima literally means the grounds reserved for animals belonging to the king, which are out of the grounds and bounds of other animals. However, other animals can somehow get into there sometimes, meaning they have exceeded the limits. It is thus quite likely that some of his animals would stray into it, or the animals might end up being in it. Truly, every king has a hima. Every king has got boundaries, has got a boundary, has got limitation, has got hudud. And the hima of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are all those things that are haram. The hima of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what he has prohibited. 
And this is important for us to understand because these are some of the things that we need to stay away from when we are confused about the textual context and when we are confused about the nas, we are confused about evidence and we are confused about any other things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from confusion and give us knowledge and give us understanding and give us more insight into the Quran and the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we can understand some of these principles and we can understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us and we can understand the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in its right perspective so that we can stay away from those things that are haram and being involved in those things that are halal and even to stay away from the things that are shubuhat, the things that are doubtful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us and give us that understanding so that we can become closer to him with good deeds and righteous works.